Motors, welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. That's a 2008 Dodge Grand Carry Van. It's got the big 3.8 in it, and it's also got lean code. Uh, lean codes, or lean code, PO171, so it's going to be lean on bank one. Um, however, I think this thing only has two oxygen sensors. So, lean engine. <laughs> uh, does it have oxygen sensors on both banks to decipher, you know, bank one, bank two? So, engine's running lean. Uh, I looked at data. Uh, on scan tool and I see the fuel trim is pegged out it's at like plus 32 and then short term as a car sits here and idles just at an idle is around uh, three or four percent so it definitely is running lean now this is a map sensor engine uh, they're quite tolerable to vacuum leaks however I did my due diligence and just quickly checked it for a vacuum leak we have no vacuum leak map sensor reading looks good engine coolant temperature sensor reading looks good not too much that can skew these so i immediately shifted my focus to fuel delivery we checked fuel pressure we got about 53 54 pounds running at an idle that's good uh don't really care about volume or wide open throttle test or anything because the problem is present at an idle so now what i want to do is an injector balance test or an injector drop test to see are all the injectors dropping the same amount of fuel pressure do we have an injector that has a flow issue creating you know this lean condition uh, and it runs so lean that uh, during a cold start idle, it actually has a bit of a misfire, just a little intermittent, don't know what cylinder it is, it didn't look, but you feel it when, you, when I pulled it in, you get this little fish bite. So uh, I'm gonna bring it along, we're gonna use uh, the PicoScope, we're gonna use the WPS 500 pressure transducer, and we're gonna measure all the injector drops on all six cylinders and compare them to each other. There's not a published spec for this, but typically if you have an injector that's failing, that can't flow as well as the others, or multiple ones, you'll see it uh, in relative terms, relative to each other. Uh, I would assume the only time this could burn you is if all six of them are plugged equally. So over here at the car, the injectors obviously are under the intake, so they're kind of a pisser to get to by pulling the intake. However, fortunately, I looked on a wiring diagram, I've got all our injector colors, not that it's super important to you, but I see we have two main connectors over here, and I unplugged those uh, I got the cavity printouts for them, and I went ahead and found, you know, each injector, okay? So they have one common power source, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six injectors. They split them up between the two different connectors. Uh, I've got an OTC fuel injector tester. So this is uh, replaced my little one that I sent up in a cloud of smoke. Uh, and this basically, you can do one pulse at 500 milliseconds, 50 pulses at 10 milliseconds, or 100 pulses at 5 milliseconds. Uh, I guess if you do the math, they all equate to 500 milliseconds uh, total time, time on, anyways. So, uh, or I did my math wrong, <laughs> which is plausible. So what we're going to do, I'm going to probe into the common power source. And this here, I chopped the connector off base end with it. Um, and I just put bullet connectors on it so I can use it on whatever I want. And then we're going to stick another one here. Polarity really doesn't matter. And then we're going to pick our first injector and i'm just going to probe it on there now up on our screen uh we've got a couple of things got the scan tool and we've got the pico and let's see here we're going to put a little more time on the screen so we can get them all in one recording so we're going to do 100 seconds per division i'm going to turn the fuel pump on hopefully i think i left the key on yet so we're going to turn the fuel pump on let it run for a few seconds we're going to stop it. We're going to let the fuel pressure equalize, let it just kind of steady out for just a few seconds, and then we're going to hit the start button. And we just gave her one pulse at 500 milliseconds. Okay? And then we're going to turn the fuel pump back on. And then we're going to stop it, and then we're going to go to the next injector. I'm just going right down the line on them. Uh, we can figure out which two here in the end if, if we have to. And then wait a second. We hit the button again, it drops it, let it collect some data. We turn the fuel pump back on, shut the fuel pump back off. And we'll move to our next injector, which is the last one here on this top row. Fuel pressure steady. We hit the button, it drops. You see the process here, folks? Then we're going to move to, I think it looks like the last injector on this one. It's the third one in right in the middle. 
build up our pressure. Everything looks good so far on the Pico. We drop again. That one looks good. Start it. We'll stop it. Now we've got to go to our other connector. And that looks like top to the left. Second one in. Put a hook on that one. Hopefully that's right. Whoa! <laughs> Alright, that one's a little different, huh? We'll just gather all our data before we analyze anything. And then it looks like the middle one in the black connector bottom row. And then we're steady. Alright. Then we'll stop. So it looks like we, we've got one odd duck, or we've got one good one and four odd ducks. Uh, I am curious if there is any difference. Uh, technically, we should start the engine because we don't want to have it too flooded, but we're going to skip it. We're going to go, we're going to let the injector pulse, see if this makes any difference. And we're going to run them right in the same order again, just for the sake of, for the sake of doing it. <laughs> I don't even know why. I don't believe it makes a difference, but we're going to have a look. So we cycle the first one, definitely, definitely makes a difference. We're going to go to the third one over here. We're going to build up our fuel pressure again. Got our fuel pressure steady. We're on our next one over. That's it. Definitely get some different results there, I would say. You shouldn't really run this test more than a couple times. Actually, more than once. You do risk uh, flooding the engine severely. Uh, let's see, we're on our third one. We're going to pulse it again. Okay, they look relatively the same as they did the first test. I don't imagine we're going to have different results, but we'll go to our last one there. Fuel pressure built back up. Let that steady for a second. Hit the button. So there's our first four. All right, now we got to switch to the other connector, which was this one here. Switch to that one. Now this is the one, the fourth one in that dropped the most pressure. We'll see if that stays the same. Holding it. clearly does. That injector clearly drops more. Alright, and then we'll go to our last one. Whatever injector number this is. This is injector number two. Let our fuel pressure steady there for a second. So that's interesting. The pulsing on that one did seem to make a difference. So I'm kind of glad I did, did this test. So let's have a look. Uh, let me unhook this so we don't accidentally hit the button again. So we'll have a look at our data here. We're going to take and zoom in on this if we can. Get a little bit bigger picture. Hopefully it doesn't over enhance it. Okay. So this is pretty tolerable to look at. So we'll pull down our cursors. And we'll see what our resting fuel pressure was. It's got to be the same just about every time. So we're about 57.23 PSI. And we're going to look at our first set of data here that we gathered. Let me, uh, let me do something here, folks. Okay, I, th I think we're enhanced enough to see. We can make a, an assessment. So this is our first injector we tested, our second, third, fourth fifth and sixth. So we had a steady 57 PSI and we can see the first injector dropped to about 40 PSI. Uh, the second, third and fourth dropped to about 41 ish. Not much difference. About one PSI I would say different between the first one, second, third and fourth. However, the fifth we can see we have, you know, obviously something going on there that is dropping uh, much more, uh, which is pretty interesting. Um, and when we ran 
or test the second time pulsing the injectors instead of using a steady, you know, just a single, what is it, 500 millisecond single pulse. Uh, we had similar results, but uh, slightly different here on the end. So our fifth injector obviously dropped more. Um, our sixth injector, however, was substantially different. Uh, so the drop in, what did that drop? 20 PSI total, that one only dropped 16. So pretty interesting, to say the least. Uh, vehicle clearly has some injector problems. So my thought here would be, you know, looking at this, uh, we have four injectors that are relatively the same. We have our fifth injector that's dropping more. And our sixth injector, when it's pulsed, it drops less. So do we have a situation where we have one injector overfueling it? Um, I'm just, I gotta think here. If, if that overfuels, oxygen sensor sees it rich. Uh, would that cut back the fuel trims, making all the other cylinders lean? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not going to give it a whole ton of thought because clearly the vehicle needs injectors. It's got almost 200,000 miles on it. Uh, looking at this, seeing that we have two, one possibly flowing too much, one that's flowing too little, uh, or we have four that are flowing too little, one that's normal and one that's less. Uh, without having a known good comparison, because this isn't published specs on this car, uh, I would just recommend to the customer that we just, if we're going to pull the intake, we'll just do six injectors. We know we have two suspect ones or five suspect ones, one good one. I don't know. Uh, so you can handle it a couple ways. Either get a vehicle that you know is good, get your known good, see what a normal injector drop is on this exact injector number on the exact, you know, uh, engine. And then you can make a good assessment from there. Or you can just recommend in this case, you know, just doing all six or we can get two new ones and put them in and see how they compare to the old ones. There's lots of ways you could go about it. I'll let them decide. Like I say, a lot of miles, uh, but just wanted to share this with you, how I do an injector drop test, so to speak, to check them relative to each other. So uh, I know it doesn't fit everybody's cup of tea, but hopefully you guys enjoy it and you can maybe make use of your PicoScope and your WPS 500 in a different way. So thanks for watching.